America, ceiling unlimited. Go ahead, America, ceiling unlimited. From Hollywood, California, the men and women who make Lockheed and Vega aircraft present America Ceiling Unlimited. With our regular star, Joseph Cotton, and with Nan Nguyen, Wilbur Hatch, his orchestra and chorus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you one of America's most talented young actors, Joseph Cotton. Thank you. Every Sunday at this time, we try again to add a few figures to America's box score. The figures we add are the answers to four questions. What are we saying? What are we singing? What are we reading? What news are we making? We know the total sum is beyond the power of numbers to express. Our country is great. Her future is limitless. Well, that's a grand total. But what are the smaller figures in that column? First, what are we saying? The statement of the week. We quote from the American magazine for October. Harry L. Hopkins has this to say. Overconfidence sometimes leads to relaxation. Relaxation leads to a longer war. Soldiers in battle don't reflect. This moment is always the moment for the supreme effort. It's only we who have time to sit down and reflect, who begin to question the war aims of our allies, and begin to bicker about post-war plans. We are on the offensive with soldiers, sailors, and Marines, trained to the hilt and equipped as no army or navy in history was ever equipped. We know how well they fight. I believe we'll have victory in 1945 against both Germany and Japan. I don't think that's too long to wait for the reward. The reward Mr. Hopkins means is something to which we at Lockheed and Vega have dedicated ourselves. All-out, non-stop production is our contribution to victory, to the future, to America, Ceiling Unlimited. The Song of the Week. Nowhere but in America does a whole nation express its opinion on popular music every week. Probably that's because nowhere in the world is the air so free as here. People listen to what they please. Lockheed and Vega notice that currently you want to listen to Sunday, Monday, or always. So here it is, as performed with Wilbur Hatch, his orchestra and chorus, by one of the nation's favorite singers, Nan Nguyen. <laughs> Go wrong. Well, at 
Heaven What is America reading? I suppose the answer to that could be anything and everything, from seed catalogs to Shakespeare. So we can't be wrong in assuming that this story by Winston Norman from the American magazine is at least typical of what some Americans are reading. It's called A Smart Soldier Like Me. Let's hear then the radio version of The Short Story of the Week. <laughs> Believe me, folks, this is something you ought to see. Bull Bellows has the masked marble by the ear and the right leg, and he's going to tear the ear off. No, 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 it's the leg. Now the masked marble's on top. Friend, give it to his ball. Go out, chew his nose off. Look out! Don't let it get that hold on you. It was a grunt and groan opera, which I personally will never forget for two reasons. The first reason was... Rip his neck off. Jump on him! Yeah. That bloodthirsty dame sitting next to me. You never saw anything like her. I've seen some beautiful numbers in my life, but believe me, this pigeon was the queen of Sheba and Points West. I watched her a while, and, and my attention was distracted, and when I looked around again, she was gone. Private Jackson? Yes, sir. Look at this man. Yes, sir. He, he seems a little uh, uh, informal from the waist down. Exactly. We can't squeeze him into G.I. pants and shoes. The shirt don't fit so good neither. I can't breathe. <laughs> well, you can see it's a pitiful case. Well, Jackson is the company clerk and is the only man I know who can work miracles in this army. What do you suggest? You mean, sir, without form CHQSV74629 in triplicate and countersigned without initials of CO verified? That's exactly what I mean. As he stands, he isn't only no good to the United Nations cause, he's probably a source of comfort to the enemy. <laughs> now, if you can cut the red tape... Leave it to me, Lieutenant. Get me the adjutant's office. Of course, meeting Bull Bellows was the other reason for remembering the wrestling match. Well, the fact that I was able to get him in pants and shoes made him practically my slave. Hey, pal. Huh? I got something I thought you might like. What? Hedy Lamar, where have you got her? Me? Uh, I never seen Hedy. Oh, you're kidding. No, I got a cartoon of cigarettes for you. Why? <laughs> this is a surprise, Bull. Just what I needed. Say, pal, did I ever tell you about my Goyle Mabel? God knows you've tried. She's a wonderful dame. Don't call that dame a dame. <laughs> well, I've known her ever since we was kids. We grown up together. That's grew. Uh, okay, okay. Just in your case, groan. Huh? <laughs> well, look, Mabel's birthday is tomorrow, and if you could fix me up with a pass or something like... You mean like... you want me to forge the CO's signature? Well, you've done it before. Perhaps, yeah, but only for important occasions. What's so important about a birthday? It ain't that so much. It's... I want to see who's hanging around my goyle. <laughs> and when I catch him, I'll go like this. And do like this. Hey, and I'll oh, put my knee on the oh, I'll take your hey, shot here. Oh, my nose! Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm sorry, pal. I, I guess I got sort of carried away. Yeah, yeah. Well, you carry yourself away to your girlfriend and leave me to my bruises. In about three months, our outfit broke camp and moved up near San Francisco, and it didn't take any crystal gazer to guess where our next move would be. By this time, Bull was, believe it or not, a sergeant, to which high rank he attained purely as the result of being built like a brick house and having a voice that would shatter an eardrum at 40 paces. But he was still the same old Bull. Gee, this is swell sitting out here with you two on the porch in the darkness. <laughs> sort of gets you, don't it? Oh, yes, yes, definitely. Mm, it is beautiful, isn't it? Uh... How would you boys like something cool to drink? Beer? Milk for me. I'll get it for you. Ah, gosh, Captain's a swell girl. You sure was lucky to find her up here, wasn't you? Yeah, yeah, she's okay. She's wonderful. 
But it makes me feel awful. Why? On account of being so far away from Mabel. Say, look, she just sent me her picture. <whistles> oh, of course, she's prettier than that. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Haven't I seen that little package before somewhere? Uh, huh? Oh, I remember. Yeah, it was a girl at the wrestling match. What to do? The best thing I could think of was sinus trouble. It got so bad, I finally had to be transferred back to our former headquarters. Dear Bull, I just got here today, and my sinus trouble is cleared up already. It's going to be tough not being with you guys when you go out to spear the Japs. I guess I'll just have to stick to this paperwork and make the best of it. Give Captain my love and tell her to write every day, and... Oh, yes, I, I'll remember to call Mabel and talk to her about you, if I can ever find the time to do it. I hope she's in. Hello? Is uh, Mabel there? Gee, Mabel, this, this beach is really beautiful in the moonlight, and I, uh, I might mention the fact that you are, too. <laughs> you shouldn't say things like that. Why not? Bull would uh, want me to admire you. You still haven't told me about Bull. Haven't I? Well, he told me to tell you he's feeling okay. Oh. Yeah, he sure looks fine with those sergeant stripes. When he walks into a night spot, <laughs> those stripes sure do bring the women around. They do? Well, it's happened to a lot of good soldiers in this war. I wouldn't worry about it. Oh. Oh, I, I won't. Now, you must tell me all about you. Well, let's see. Uh, I was born, grew up, got drafted, and met you. You take it from there. Uh, I, I don't think Bull would like you to say things like that. No, no, I don't think he would either. What am I saying? Of course, he, of course he'd like it. He especially asked me to give you a, uh, give you a kiss for him. Bull? What? Uh, uh, I mean, I, I mean, did he? Sure. Sure he did, isn't it? Small favor to do for a pal. Yeah, maybe. Oh, no. No, no, Mabel. Oh, wait. Please. No, uh, no, no, just one. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's just, for, just for uh, good no. old Bull. Oh, well, if you're going to fight and, and maybe lose your life over there in, in Australia with with only those terrible Ubangi women and... Well, maybe just... just one. Time waltzed on for a while and everything was lovely. Except sometimes in my dreams... I break his arm, I dig his legs and diamond and another on his neck. I put my oh. knee in his back and twist his head off his I'd head. wake up screaming. But I figure I'm a smart soldier. I got myself a desk job. Two marvelous girls, Catherine and Mabel. I'm doing all right in this war. I can take care of myself. Then suddenly about 10 o'clock one evening, I'm sitting on Mabel's porch waiting for her to come home from wherever she was when... Uh... Is that you, Mabel? Oh, 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 let me out of here. Jackson! It's you! I've been searching for now, you. Now, let, let, listen, Bull. Uh, I can explain everything. Just give me My a... My uh... pal. Everything's fixed, pal. It's in the bag. Oh, wait a minute. What's in the bag? Your transfer. I knew your heart was busting to go to New Guinea with the rest of the gang. And I fixed it for you with the CO. And the doc said it'll do your sinus good. Well, that, 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 that's swell. Oh, gee, I was glad to do it. Where's Mabel? Oh, I don't know, Bull. Out with a captain, probably. Gosh, I, I hope so. You what? I mean, I hope she's in love with somebody. Oh, 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 I forgot to tell you. <laughs> Catherine and me got married yesterday. Oh, wait a minute. Hold everything. Yeah. And since I got to be done Now, not so fast. You married my girl. I got that much. Now, what's this about you having to be here? Aren't you going to New Guinea with the rest of the outfit? No. Ain't it lousy? <laughs> I got to stick here and yell the manual arms at a bunch of dumb rookies while you guys get all the fun. They can't do this to me. So, I am now sitting here on the edge of my bunk Bound for the Solomons or Lord knows where My stomach feels very, very unhappy And I'm writing my diary I write I am a smart soldier Nobody could deny that The only trouble is Smartness alone won't get you out of a half Nelson And so... Dear diary, I am going to chuck you into the ocean, and I hope you'll be a lesson to some poor fish who can read.
Typically American is the combination sales and service. You'll find it on Main Street or Broadway in every American city and town. You'll find the same combination in the aircraft business, too, on a worldwide scale. From the Aleutians to Australia, from California to Cairo to Chongqing, 14,000 experts of Lockheed's International Service Organization are at work today, now, servicing the warplanes of the United Nations, keeping them flying and fighting. Someday, there will be no more war-torn Lockheeds, but there will still be International Lockheed Service. And wherever you fly, be it Bombay or Bangkok, London or Little Rock, you'll meet the sign, Lockheed Sales and Service. The Lockheed and Vega Dividend. You've heard one of the most popular songs of the week. Here's another. However... Put Your Arms Around Me, Honey, isn't popular for the first time. This same old tune was knocking him out way back in the horse and buggy days. And here again, to give it a new lease on life when she sings it, is Nan Wynn. being made quickly nowadays, and most of it looks awfully good for our side. These days, it's a positive pleasure to ask, how are we doing? The news headlines of the moment. Since we went on the air 20 minutes and 30 seconds ago, we have been checking the CBS News teletypes to bring you the latest reports from all fronts. In Italy, commandos lead allied troops up the toe of the boot. Italian fleet abandons Taranto, hiding place on the heel, as General Montgomery lands in Italy. In England. Allied bombers out on new cross-channel raids. General Arnold reports successful U.S. Air Force attack on Ghent railway yards in Belgium. In Russia. Axis admittedly on the defense in central and southern Russia. 
Moscow convinced Germans will be shoved back 100 miles to the Dnieper River. In the Far East. MacArthur's men drop 84 explosive tons on Ley, New Guinea. U.S. India-based bombers fly 2,000 miles to surprise Japs on Nicobar Islands in the Indian Ocean. Those are the latest headlines. You'll hear full details on the CBS program that follows. Well, in a way, all those reports are merely parts of a much bigger story. A story that began in 1918 at Versailles, but which came to a head in September 1939. The feature picture starts in 20 minutes. Seats now on the balcony. What did he say? 20 minutes? Oh, gosh, you just can't get into any picture show nowadays. Yeah, ain't it a crime? Why don't people stay home once in a while? Well, anyhow, we can get an evening paper and read it while we wait, huh? Hey, boy! Yeah? A journal, please. Uh, what does it say? Huh? Oh, uh, Germany invades Poland. Gee, uh, is that bad? Well, maybe for Poland, but it's got nothing to do with us. <laughs> nothing to do with you? Two days later, September 3rd, 1939, Great Britain and France were at war with Germany. But that had nothing to do with you either. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you once again, this is not our war. If the European nations want to fight amongst themselves, it doesn't concern us. Nobody has attacked us, and nobody is going to. Nobody would dare. 1939, the United States has an army of only 507,000 men. America is okay, see? What do we want with an army, a navy, and an air force? We got plenty already. It'd be a waste of the taxpayers' money. Am I right or wrong? You're wrong, pal. Dead wrong. Pearl Harbor taught us that on December 7th, 1941, two years after this war began. America was still unprepared. In 1941, the United States Army numbered 1,525,000 men. And still a year later, in December 1942, 4,250,000 men. And we estimate the need of an army of 10 million. And what about the production front? Where are the tanks, planes, and guns? The news at that time was bad. And that concludes the roundup of today's news. Jap victories grow in Pacific. Germany masses strength for new drive. Rubber shortage threatens to paralyze nation. President Roosevelt to make statement. Thank goodness you turned it off, Henry. The news makes me so nervous nowadays. It makes me a lot worse than nervous. It makes me sick. I still can't understand it. But, Henry, you're the mayor of this town. Yes, yes, don't... I'm his honor, the mayor. I'm the man who said, vote for me and your sons will never fight. I said this was a phony war. I'm the man who could see both sides of any question. Look at me. Oh, Henry, now Look it's not me. as bad as all that, is it? Yes, it was as bad as that. In fact, it was so bad that only now are we beginning to realize how close we came to utter defeat. <laughs> Classified advertising. Yes, I'll take it on the phone in shorthand. Men and women wanted immediately for vital aircraft jobs. Mm -hmm. Thousands needed at once. No skill required. Highest wages. Transfer. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you once again, this is our war. And we must fight it on the home front just as relentlessly as our boys on the fighting front. You notice he's changed his tune. He calls it our war. Remember, the war for freedom had been going on for years. Finally, we realized what the war was really about. Yet with everything the nation could do, freedom was being lost. Only a miracle could save us. Germany! Up! Eddie! Now listen, you guys. It's my job to make soldiers out of you. In weeks instead of years. It ain't gonna be easy. I don't even know whether it can be done. But by George, I'm gonna try. Now this is a rivet gun. You won't have any trouble with it if you remember what I tell you. Here, hold it in your hand like this. And there, now try it. Like this? accomplish that miracle. What does that mean to us? It means that the Army Air Forces accepted 73,000 planes, 
in a period of 18 months. You heard the headlines, and you know that at last we are winning this war. That's good news, isn't it? Yeah, that's good news. But look, I'm a private in this army, and I've been thinking. I've been thinking that if we'd stopped Germany and Italy and the Japs in the first place, there wouldn't have been no war. Why didn't we? Why didn't we? Because we didn't have the stuff to do it with, and we didn't have the common sense to see what was coming. We were fools. And foolishness and freedom don't go together. Well, listen, mister. I just want to ask one question. How long will it be before this whole thing happens all over again? We are fighting so it never will happen again, soldier, and we are not fighting in vain. We know now what we've got to do to win and keep the peace. If we want peace, we must be prepared to enforce peace. We hope that we in America have learned that lesson forever. If we have, that's the great news as we enter the fifth year of the last war a vigilant America will ever have to fight. You've heard this week's answers to the questions we, we ask every week. A leader spoke, a girl sang, a soldier outsmarted himself, and you heard the news. Good news it was, too. But we know that, that it isn't a complete picture of America, and we hope it'll grow as we add to it week by week. So, until next Sunday, this is Joseph Cotton saying goodbye for the men and women of Lockheed and Faith. For protection today and progress tomorrow, look to Lockheed for leadership. Listen again next Sunday to America Ceiling Unlimited, starring Joseph Cotton, with Nan Wynn in the chorus. The writer was Mindret Lord. Incidental music was composed and directed by Wilbur Hatch. This program has been a presentation of the Lockheed and Vega Aircraft Corporations of Burbank, California. Joseph Cotton appears by special arrangement with David O. Selznick and Nan Wynn with Columbia Pictures Corporation. Patrick McGeehan speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Hey!